If you're looking to emulate Dreamcast games on Android, then you'll want to decide between two popular choices. Redream has been available on Android since around 2019, while Flycast has been around since 2021. There's also RetroArch, which uses a Flycast core, but these cores tend to be outdated, so I'm not sure that I would recommend that. As we focus on these two main options, both of them are currently available to download for free in the Google Play Store. However, Redream has an in-app purchase of $6 here on the States, which is going to be a required purchase for anyone who wants to play games in high definition using its upscaling technology. It's certainly not required by any means, but it should be something that you're aware of before you decide on which emulator you want to go with. Since Flycast seems to be the community favorite right now, let's start off by going over its features. Flycast is a multi-platform Sega Dreamcast, Naomi, Naomi 2, and a Thomas Wave emulator derived from Recast. A Dreamcast BIOS file is optional, but if you want to emulate those other consoles, then BIOS files will be required. This emulator supports widescreen rendering and can also auto apply codes and patches to certain games to have them support those widescreen displays. It can emulate two expansion sockets per controller and can emulate standard Dreamcast controllers, a keyboard, a mouse, a light gun, twin sticks, and even the ASCII mission stick. It has resolution and texture upscaling built in, frame skipping, the ability to dump textures and load custom textures, and Flycast includes a 32 megabyte RAM option and has SH4 under and overclock options. Netplay is supported with Flycast on both Dreamcast and Naomi games. There's local multiplayer support, and it's able to support GPU features like tile clipping, fogging, multipass rendering, 64-bit Dynarec fixes for Shenmue 1 half, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, and Heavy Metal Geomatrix. The list goes on with support for flat shading, bump mapping, tri-linear filtering, improved palette and YUV texture quality, and extra depth scaling that fixes the graphics for Samurai Showdown 6. There's a lot to love with Flycast, with the community enjoying its custom cheats system, a more accurate sound emulation system, and support for the microphone so that you can play the game Seaman. The main downside of this emulator is that the UI for Flycast can be a bit clunky in comparison. Redream is a closed source Sega Dreamcast emulator. It also does not require a Dreamcast BIOS. However, it is generally recommended since using it without one can result in some games bugging out. The developer of Redream introduced a feature called Multisync back in 2018 that is said to help prevent audible crackling and unexpected latency of audio playback, while also working to prevent skipped or torn frames with video playback. And while this is nice, it does require a bit more memory bandwidth compared to other emulators. But with that said, Redream is said to still perform well on lower spec devices, as they have more time to do the actual emulation work since the main thread is never blocked by VSync. And for anyone who has the VSync Force feature enabled in the settings, 
emulation is still said to run at the correct speed since it's being driven by the audio sync feature. Some people within the community prefer Redream as it's said to render games very cleanly without glitching compared to other emulators. The user interface is much easier to deal with as well. Redream supports automatic cover art downloads and you can use widescreen codes with the emulator as well. The main downsides with Redream is that you have to buy the upscaling feature, as I mentioned earlier. You will also need to unzip your games if you want to play them with this emulator. The lack of shaders can also be a huge disappointment if you're into using those when emulating those games. And it looks like it hasn't been updated for Android in about 12 months. So now that you know a bit more about these two Dreamcast emulators, you have a better understanding of which one you want to go with. I'll be sure to include links to both of these emulators for Android down in the video description below, as well as the pinned comment so that it's easy for everyone to find. Just please remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more video game emulation content like this.